please welcome Asha Curran, Chief Innovation Officer and Director of Belfer Center for Innovation and Social Impact at the 92nd Street Y, in conversation with Zubaida Bai, founder and CEO of Eyes Inc. and UBS Global Visionary. So if anyone heard a mysterious voice from a live mic backstage, that was me. <laughs> I apologize for any bad words I probably said. <laughs> so Zubaida, let's get right into it because our time is so limited. Hi, Social Good Summit audience. It's so good to see you every year. So I am so thrilled to be here with Zubaida today, and she has an incredible resume that would take our whole 15 minutes to go through, so I won't. But um, Zubaida is a, a leader and a pioneer and an expert in, um, in engineering design for vital, low-cost uh, healthcare products for women and girls living in poverty all over the world. So the scope of the problem that she's tackling is, is so astronomical and, um, and so many interventions are being tried and hers is really beautiful in its simplicity and inspiring in its scope and its vision. Um, just as one kind of breathtaking stat, uh, over 800 women will die today from complications um, resulting from childbirth and pregnancy. So Subada, I want to talk a little bit about what got you into this work, what was the experience or experiences that inspired you to, to tackle this problem, and, and how are you doing it? Sure, so I started my life wanting to be a mechanical engineer and design cars, um, and really wanted, and that dream basically came to me because I thought that was the way for me individually out of poverty. Uh, but when I decided I needed to make a headway into a career, there were two options. One was a corporate IT job that most, or 90% of us Indians do and are very good at it. And the other one was developing products for women. Uh, and my heart definitely said developing products for women is where I should go and that's what I did. Um, and being in that path, I think I came across a lot of issues that women face. But along that journey where I was trying to find my own foothold and understand where I could contribute better, I think there was a serendipitous um, interaction that I had with a midwife who basically opened my eyes to a whole new world and said, well, the tools that she used for childbirth were agricultural tools. Uh, and as a mother, um, as somebody's daughter who had lost his mom to childbirth, I think it was definitely a serendipity that that came into forefront and that was the beginning of my journey into uh, understanding a whole new world of women's health, but very specifically maternal and newborn health. And what you do, what you did then with that realization was not to impose a solution, right, but to prototype something based on uh, a, a woman-led process. Definitely, and I think we all know that women's health solutions don't work in today's day and age because women are never involved in the process. A lot of policies that we go through, whether in the developed or the developing world, are framed by 90% men in the room who have no clue what's going on with women. And I think that's what I wanted to change even at that time back in 2009. I really went back to the women, tried to understand what they needed, why they needed it, and the big eye-opener for me was that even though these women lived in poverty, they were not poor in mind. They definitely knew what they wanted and they were willing to make an investment in their own health and the health and well-being of their child. And that led to creation of a for-profit company in maternal health that I'm still building the road to travel on, um, which is called Isink that I'm representing today. Why is it important that it's for-profit? It's important because as a charity-driven organization, we are used to giving what we think is right, but as a for-profit, it's important to give them what is right at a price point that they can afford, and I think that, that was definitely the right decision I made, and I'm very proud of that one decision of my life. So will you describe the signature product? Because what I, what I love about it, especially in the context of this conference, is um, that this is a conference about 
technology and, um, and solutions. And we hear about all these kind of breathtaking, sometimes hard to understand, very high-tech innovations. Um, technology plays into the business model of what you do, um, but it is not, but the product itself is actually beautifully simple and completely low-tech. Definitely. So the kind of technology that I work with, though I can understand the real high-end robotic technology as well, is called appropriate or frugal technology, where we've developed a $3 product uh, that actually is built on what the WHO recommends as important to ensure that a woman does not uh, die during childbirth because of infections uh, or because of lack of basic tools. So the product basically contains um, simple tools that are needed during childbirth that we can use uh, to prevent child mortality and maternal mortality and morbidity. And what does it include? It includes a blood absorbing sheet, a surgical scalpel, a bar of soap, a pair of gloves, the first cloth to wipe the baby's amniotic fluid clean. But it also comes in a beautiful purse that is given to the mother as a gift post childbirth that she um, is acknowledged for all her hard work because that's something that we always forget in women's health, that when she gives birth, it's her, she is as important as the baby after the childbirth. And how do women react to it? They really love it. I think that's been our signature product. We've tried to take it off because a lot of investors think it's high cost. It's not something that fits into the business model, but that's something every one of our consumer and customer wants, and we've never been able to take it off our business model. And where do, in the, in the, in the pipeline of, amazing. How many, how many of these are around the world now? We're touching about 400,000 kits out in the market. Um, that has directly impacted lives of about 800,000 mothers and babies. Amazing, really amazing. And so the part of this that's also fascinating is, is you as a female entrepreneur and the importance of that as part of this story and as the part of the solution to these massive maternal and female health issues all over the world. Uh, you, know, you have a master's in engineering, you have an MBA. Um, there's another world, right, where you took the path of raising a lot of capital for a fancy startup, making a ton of money. Um, tell us about that part of the journey and why it's important. I think it's, we, we always forget that there is a market out there which is 90%. Um, I do not agree to the fact that you can't make money by serving the poor. Yes, you can't make ridiculously high amounts of money, uh, and that's lavishness, but you can definitely make money to survive. Um, from that perspective, I think it's been a hugely fulfilling and impacting journey for me. Um, and I think I've learned a lot along the way that as a female entrepreneur, as a mother, as a woman myself, I think it's not an easy journey. And what I am trying to do now is, now that I have built this road and walked on it, I really want to help other women walk on it as, as well. Because I think there is a world out there where you can survive and thrive as an entrepreneur, as a woman, that necessarily should not be a corporate world. So how do you do that, help, help and support other um, I have just launched my foundation this year called the Happy Woman Foundation, and the Happy Woman Foundation has three basic things that we like to do. The first thing is to coach women to step up to their own potential and believe that they can do, because I think that the, the gap in the space is not just that women entrepreneurs uh, do not exist, but also that women entrepreneurs do not believe in their potential. Um, the foundation will also coach women to kind of set boundaries between their personal and professional life called psychosynthesis coaching. And especially for women entrepreneurs who have to curb their dreams because of being a mother, the foundation will provide childcare support or support for a woman to travel with her child while she is setting up uh, or following the entrepreneurial dreams that she's always wanted to. That's amazing. And are these, yeah. And are, are these women from the communities of women that you're working to serve? It is a global community. We, we do not demarcate between a woman who's running a $100 a month revenue company in India or a $100 million company here. I think women's needs are pretty global. Uh, needs of motherhood are pretty global. The kind of support that they need are pretty global. So this foundation is basically going to support entrepreneurial dream, whether it's going to be in Denmark, India, Kenya, or US. OK, so what's next for eyes? And what do you hope for by 2030? So for us, I think we've started our global expansion. We've definitely expanded from a product perspective. So we serve the entire reproductive health needs of a woman, starting from menstrual hygiene today. Uh, we, are, we are setting up our first office in East Africa, which is our first global expansion hub. By 2030, we hope to have five global hubs uh, providing distribution to different parts of the world. And we also hope to impact a billion lives, including mothers, babies, girls, and the community surrounding them. 
through the products and direct intervention that we will provide um, in terms of health, which definitely will impact into the overall economic empowerment of the society. And you'll stick. Yeah. Will you focus mostly on that life cycle, that part of the life cycle, childbirth and pregnancy? I think we, the childbirth and pregnancy is definitely the beginning. So the, in the next few years, we'll also start working in contraception and menopause. Those are two big areas that are ignored in women's health. So that will complete the women's reproductive health life cycle. And we would be um, the only company serving a woman's reproductive health life cycle and looking at it as one single unit, with we trying to separate all of them because women's health is so interlinked from puberty to menopause. And I think that's something we really want people to understand and bring to the forefront. Zubaida, thank you for the work thank you, you do. Thank you so much. Thank you.